So where are we? We are in Northern California in Sonoma County. And who are you? I'm Violet Blue and I'm standing in front of a vineyard actually, an actual Northern California vineyard. And what are, are we doing here? We are doing the Babeland interview. Babeland, my favorite sex toy store, sent me a bunch of questions and so I'm here to answer them for you. When reporting and blogging is anything off limits? Yes, of course. Uh, things that are non-consensual are off-limits, absolutely. Things that are baselessly mean-spirited are off-limits. And I think that contextually, I mean, what's off-limits for me is not going to be off-limits for TMZ, so I definitely have my own standards and practices and rules. But um, also off-limits is talking about my personal sex life. I used to, but it doesn't work out so well. And it's uh, non-consensual to my partners. Do you have a coming out story? I don't really have a coming out story because my progression from being a, an analog writer to being an online writer to now being an author and, and all of the things that I do has been very gradual and there's never really been anything to come out about and nothing, no one, and there's never been anyone to really come out to. And when you were young, what did you want to do when you grew up? <laughs> I wanted to be an archaeologist. I wanted to be the female Indiana Jones. <laughs> Mistress K asks, mm. what aspects of BDSM do you personally enjoy? What personal aspects of BDSM do I enjoy? I think that overall, without disclosing too much about myself or my partners, I think I really enjoy the power exchange involved in every bit of BDSM. And I also love gear, and I love to geek out on gear and toys and things like that. Everyone loves shiny things, right? Do you have a sex ed story you would like to share? I have a lot of sex ed stories, but I think one of the, one of the funner situations I found myself in was when I was lecturing at USF to a group of very young students. There, there must have been three or four hundred students in the room. It was one of those giant amphitheaters and they were raucous and out of control and they kind of didn't want to be there and you could tell it was a required class um, and I had just the person who had spoken before me was Dr. Ruth and it was funny because she had a very short podium <laughs> and I came out and the podium was like up to here um, and I'm not that tall either but I got out and they were just like all over the place and I couldn't get their attention and I was trying to talk to them and thinking like they probably would really love to hear what I have to say because I will speak frankly about sex to these kids and so I finally put up a slide that was a cutaway down diagram of a woman giving deep throat fellatio and the place erupted in screams and then I had their attention. So thinking about teens, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, do you have any sex advice for teens? I have a lot of sex advice for teens and the main sex advice I have for teens is to learn as much as you can certainly about reproductive sexuality but also what's really really important is understanding why sex feels good and why you want sex to feel good and so try to figure out what's pleasurable about sexuality and don't feel like you need to do something because everybody else is doing it so also do a lot of research online check out sites like Scarletine which is excellent what is your favorite sex toy you know the classics are classics for a reason and I would have to say that a girl's best friend is definitely the rabbit habit vibrator, which is the dual action vibrator. Although the smaller, more portable Hitachis are really, really versatile for coupled sex. So without disclosing too much about myself, those are, those are pretty much standards around my house. Going back to media for a second, what have been your most positive and your most negative bring sex to mainstream media experiences? Well, as far as positives go, I would think that, uh, I'd say that being on Oprah uh, November was wonderful and it blew my mind because I definitely had some pretty preconceived notions about what it might like to be on that show and what Oprah herself might be like and she's completely sex positive. And what a lot of people don't know was that after the show was over, Oprah kept me on Skype for an hour with her and her audience, just with her, and her and I fielded questions with her audience for an entire hour where we, we took their questions and gave them sex advice and talked to them about relationships. So that was incredibly positive and it gave me a lot of hope, actually, because I think she's doing great stuff. The 
the most negative experiences I've had. I think that uh, being on Tyra Banks was pretty negative, and it wasn't because of the audience. It was because um, Tyra had some very, very narrow boxes that she wanted to see, not just sex in, but sex educators. So because I refused to cover up my tattoos, she completely limited what she could offer her audience, and I found that to be pretty sad. So you've also written a lot of books. How, ma uh, how, how many books? <laughs> I've written a lot of books. Um, I know it's over 30, but some of those I've, I've edited as well, so I haven't written them, I've, I've curated them, or, or rather, you know, like an anthology, I've put them together, but it is over 30, Well, think, thinking of the books, which did you enjoy writing the most, mm. and why? There's bits and pieces. I really enjoyed writing the oral sex books a lot, the Ultimate Guide to Fellatio and the Ultimate Guide to Cunnilingus, which now are coming out in their second editions, and that's really exciting because I got to refresh them and update them, and that was, a, that was really nice. And the writing in those was really, really exciting. Just thinking of all of my books is the introduction that I wrote to Best Women's Erotica 2009, where I retold the story of Persephone from the point of view of a, of a female virgin who wanted nothing more than to be deflowered. And that was really, really fun to write. Well, that's almost all the questions that Babe Lanner asked. Do you have anything else you'd like to say before we say goodbye? I think that, um, you know, other than saying, you know, visit me at my website, follow me on Twitter, or all of those other things that I could say. And I know this may come off sounding like a totally cheesy commercial for Babeland, which is not what they asked me to do. But I just wanted to thank Babeland for, for everything. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for spending the time. Violet Blue.